After years of neglect, African agriculture is being recognized as a powerful driver of the continent's relentless growth. Agriculture and the business of buying and selling the food grown in Africa now accounts for nearly half the continent's economic activity. Today, Africa's agriculture and food market is worth 310 billion US dollars and has the opportunity to grow to 1 trillion US dollars by 2030. An efficient sector could increase incomes, boost jobs and reduce hunger and environmental degradation while building shared prosperity. Today, Brazil, Indonesia and Thailand export more food product than all of the sub-Saharan African countries combined. It's time to change this. Despite being home to half of the world's fertile, uncultivated land and abundant water resources, African farmers get the smallest amount of produce from their crops globally. Africans import half the rice they eat and pay top dollar for it, 3.5 billion US dollars per year and more. At the country level, businesses are unable to maximize their potential because of erratic border policies, poor infrastructure and poorly functioning input markets, including for seeds and fertilizers. Lack of access to capital is also a hindrance. For instance, while Senegal is competitive among its neighbors, it is held back by the difficulty farmers have accessing land, capital, finance for irrigation expansion and appropriate crop varieties. Further east, Ghana produces fewer types of rice than Senegal, but at a significantly higher cost. The country also imports rice, but levies 40% tariffs and other charges, pushing up the price for consumers. Poor grain quality, lack of cleanliness and packaging are major deterrents for consumers, constraining the sector's performance. We still see challenges in the business environment, ranging from poor infrastructure and high transportation costs, erratic policy interventions in the agricultural markets and uh, trade, and difficulties being faced by smallholder farmers and small businesses like Freshco. There's need for uh, greater interventions in developing the informal value chains and also linking them with the formal value chains. Maize or corn is a food staple for many Africans. Zambia is competitive when importing maize. It levies fewer tariffs but fails on exports. Compared to Thailand, a major producer of rain-fed maize, it costs Zambia three times more to produce the grain because of the high transport costs, higher labor costs, and lower yields. If we take an example of Kenya, which has been a major exporter of fresh produce to the EU, and smallholder farmers would grow crops such as green beans and export them to the EU market. This is not happening now because of the stringent conditions that have been put in the EU where smallholder farmers cannot be able to meet these standards. There is need, therefore, to support these farmers so that they can be able to do business in this changing environment by giving them skills that can assist them. Cocoa is another example. It is sub-Saharan Africa's most important export crop. Ghana, Africa's largest cocoa producer, has upgraded technology and management, but yields are low because of aging farmers and aging trees. Ghana needs a substantial boost in investment to upgrade plantations and make growing cocoa a profitable venture. The result of these challenges to African food production and trade is more imports and rising food prices, coupled with the rising threat of climate change. African farmers and businesses must be empowered through good policies, increased public and private investment, and strong public-private partnerships. Africa is at a crossroads. A dynamic private food industry can work side by side with governments to link farmers to consumers in an increasingly urbanized continent. By investing in the agribusiness sector, African countries can tap into regional and global food markets make more food available locally and boost exports.